Here's another progress update on the Spartan Junior restoration. First off, I was able to get the power switch working fairly well. With the volume control out of the set, I was able to get a better idea of how this power switch might be mounted in relation to this little doohickey on the end of the uh, shaft here. So by carefully adjusting these two nuts to uh, control the depth of the power switch, and rotating this around by loosening the screw and getting everything just right. Put a little bit of a dab of grease on the end of the switch here. Uh, it's working pretty well now. And the only downside to that is uh, there's going to be a hole in the cabinet where somebody had remounted that switch. At first, I thought maybe the radio had been refinished, in which case I'd be stripping it and I could patch in that hole with some wood filler and stain over it but a closer inspection I think it is the original finish so I don't want to mess with it so I think what I'll do is fashion some kind of plug from a piece of scrap wood stain it to match up as best I can and glue it from the inside and hopefully it won't be too noticeable uh, next I got the capacitor out I was hoping to be able to just muscle it around and rotate it and then cut it off the bottom off and restuff it in place but that turned out to just be far too difficult so I ended up bending these tabs out a bit and uh, mangling the capacitor a little bit but I got it out I know um, these dings well for one they'll be under the chassis so nobody will ever see them but even so um, what I am going to do which I've done before is to fill these dings in with JB Weld which is kind of like Bondo and then I can paint it, uh, sand it down and paint it silver and uh, is, is really won't be very noticeable at all. Well, now that I've got it out, I can read the label here. It's made by Aerovox Corporation, like a number of old capacitors I've found on other radios. High farad electrolytic condenser, uh, total capacity 16 microfarads. Yes, this gigantic can is just uh, dual 8 microfarad caps. Um, Max peak voltage 525, operating voltage 450. That's what I really wanted to know because the schematic does not indicate voltage at all. Uh, and various PAT numbers and so on. For use only on rectified AC or pulsed DC currents, these condensers must not be used on raw AC currents. Yeah, polarized, <laughs> which was a new thing back in 1930. Uh, one thing I found I was curious though is this is a dual 8 but that's not what the schematic calls for it says a five, 15 and a 5 so I gotta ponder exactly what I want to replace this with uh, the downside with going with too high of a capacitance is that there's a bit of an inrush current when you first turn it on although it's not too bad when you're using a tube rectifier because it takes a while to, to glow or to light up and you got the filter choke there on one side which will act as a, a resistance for the uh, inrush current uh, Anyways, yeah. Um, so next up, I'm going to cut this open. I think I'll use my Dremel tool instead of that hacksaw. It's a little bit easier to do. I'll go out on the back porch and do that and uh, resume recording and show you what's inside this. I can tell it's dried out nicely. Sounds like a maraca. <laughs> well, that wasn't too tough. Sliced right open with the uh, Dremel tool cutoff wheel. And here's what's inside. And there's the two capacitors. Looks like the rest is just filled in with some corrugated cardboard, so they probably could have made these a lot higher capacity if they wanted to. So what's left now is to uh, pull this out, clean out the insides, wire in two new caps, and then uh, seal it back up. I got the insides out. It actually wasn't too bad. Here's the two 8 microfarad jelly roll caps cardboard stuffing and here's what's left not much of anything I'll uh, clean out the uh, insides as best I can and try not to damage this label which I have taken some pictures of and uh, I may try to scan it although it's tough to put this on a flatbed scanner because of course it's round and you get some optical distortion but if I can get a clear image of it I may try to touch it up in Photoshop and print out a new label to put over it otherwise I'll just preserve this as best I can uh, and uh, I'm not sure how to mount the new caps exactly. So it's going to be tough to solder inside the bottom of a can. <laughs> um, and those are, but those are aluminum tabs sticking up, which is uh, murder to solder onto. But I'll figure something out and I'll show you what I uh, come up with. 
I've gotten that four section cap reinstalled, which was quite a pain. There are actually four leads down in here, and two of them go right to the tube socket below. One goes to a little uh, to this power resistor here, and one goes around through a wire to this tube over here. I actually had to take this uh, transformer out and move some wires aside, but it's all in place now. Also, adds a lot of uh, integrity to this capacitor. So it turns out two screws that hold this capacitor on are attached to these metal plates here. Uh, and with that, when this capacitor was out, the screws were gone, and these two uh, metal plates were uh, kind of loose. Uh, I got the uh, volume control and power switch reattached. It's a little clunky, but it's working. I also found a diagram that goes along with the schematic that uh, sort of an artist concept looking straight down on the chassis of where things are arranged. And they definitely show the power switch right here, so I think, uh, I think I'm on the right track with putting it here. Uh, there's one disappointment while I was working on this is there is a kind of a specialized power resistor here that's got a tap on it uh, and this this was fine when I last powered the radio up but when I tested it again one side measured completely open so I had to tack in this 1.8k resistor I'm not sure about the wattage I just happen to have a 10 watt on hand I'm hoping that's enough uh, I'll have to monitor that when I power this up and see how hot it's actually getting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a bummer because this is this resistor is actually attached to two screws right to the chassis, and you know it's meant to be bolted in place. And there's some insulated washers here and wire solder on, so I'm never going to be able to find it. Or I should say, it's very unlikely that I could find an exact replacement for this. So. The time being, I'm just going to tack a resistor in there. It's kind of ugly because um, you know the rest of my newer components, like are inside this box and will be inside this can, so it's going to look really authentic, except for this big white resistor hanging out here, and also this yellow cap. Uh, the original capacitor was gone, but I have seen a picture in that artist sketch, and I'm pretty sure it's there's supposed to be like a cardboard cylinder. Uh, for the capacitor that screws in right here this hole and i do have another spartan radio which i believe uses a number of those uh, same capacitors so i think if i look at that i could probably replicate one because really it's just a cardboard tube and i could slip this capacitor inside and maybe replicate the printing on it to make it look uh, nice and authentic uh so not, not too much left uh I uh, need to put in a new power cord and uh, still restuff that cap. Oh, and I uh, dug out my block of beeswax and rubbed it on the tuning cord, and that's working much better now. It doesn't slip at all. So, yeah, I, I just read about that online. I never tried it before, but that's a really good tip, I think. Uh, something else I read about this is if you have a radio with a plastic dial like this and it gets kind of dirty. Never, ever, ever use water-based cleaner like uh, Windex or ammonia or even just straight distilled water because a lot of these old inks are water-based and the numbers will wipe right off. Um, odorless mineral spirits is a really good thing to uh, clean these with, so I'm going to try that out. And I also uh, just happened uh, to find a picture online and I was browsing around tonight of somebody with the same chassis who polished it up to like a mirror-like shine. Um, I'm not sure what exactly he used because I think this is just raw steel. It's not cadmium plated or anything, but I'm going to give it a try with a couple metal uh, polishing products I've got. Uh, one last thing. I'm going to grab the new power cord and plug and give you an idea what that's going to look like. Here's a box of goodies I got. Uh, not too long ago, of reproduction antique stuff like more of this cloth covered wiring. And somewhere in here. Oh, here we go. Here's the uh, the power cord. It's a two conductor. It's rated for uh, line, you know, modern line voltages with a nice uh, round cloth covering. And as far as the power plug goes, I got two styles. One is this rectangular type. And the other is a uh, round type, both pretty classic designs. Uh, 
not quite sure which one I'll use for this radio because the original power cord was long gone when I got this. But either one I think will look pretty uh, authentic. And uh, I think that's it for now.